How's it going, you guys? So I'm just chilling back and relaxing, and I wanted to make a quick video discussing some of the potential reasons why so many people report feeling better than they've ever felt in their lives eating an all-meat carnivore diet, okay? So for those of you who've been wondering if the carnivore diet is all hype, or, you know, why is it just a giant placebo? Why are all these people talking about reversing, um, you know, lifelong chronic depression and obviously autoimmune disorders and chronic fatigue syndrome and all these all these problems eating an all red meat diet, especially considering we have the government and all these health organizations claiming red meats like the devil, basically. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining some basic reasons why eating a carnivore diet probably makes most people feel good. And I myself was on a mostly carnivorous keto diet for about two years straight. And I even competed in Muay Thai on that diet. So and I felt amazing after the initial transition period. So uh, here we go. Check it out. The first reason why people feel so good on a carnivore diet is because it gives your body a ton of nutrients that are typically under eat people are typically under eating these nutrients in the standard American diet. Okay. So, uh, first and foremost, the most obvious one is people under eat protein. Okay. There's a huge amount of misinformation, on how much protein is required for optimal health and functioning, especially things like, uh, recovering from stress in the brain. So we're always talking about how stressful modern life is, right? We're always talking about how, oh, we're always, we're working nine to five job, we're chronically stressed, traffic, chronic fatigue syndrome, blah, blah, blah. Well, it does not surprise me at all that so many people talk about their mood drastically improving when they eat uh, a very high protein carnivore diet um, or even a ketogenic diet. Um, even if they are, you know, still restricting protein, which is stupid, most people are eating way more protein on a carnivore diet than uh, they were before. And uh, protein, as I've mentioned in many of my videos, is vitally important, obviously for muscle growth. Uh, most people report uh, increasing muscle mass without even training when they switch to a carnivore diet, which studies have actually showed. When people are under eating protein, you will actually see a, uh, a increase in muscle mass without training and a dose-dependent response, where the more protein you eat, uh, the more muscle mass people get. And obviously there's a cutoff point, but typically when people start to get adequate protein after being deprived for so long, uh, studies show in sedentary people just eating enough protein, one gram per pound of lean mass minimum, they start to build muscle without even training. And that, that has been shown. I've seen that with my clients too. And it's just crazy. So that's the first thing is that, okay, so we're under eating protein. It's not just muscle. So that muscle information without training is pretty freaking crazy. And that indicates that people are deficient basically in amino acids, um, in my opinion. The next, But the next thing is that protein is required for neurotransmitters. So now people are getting enough amino acids to uh, create the neurotransmitters to give their precursors for things like dopamine, serotonin, GABA, okay? And even things like acetylcholine, uh, and we're going to get into things like carnitine here in a bit, because that's another huge one. Um, so now people are eating all this protein, and they're getting enough amino acids to create the neurotransmitters that are required for for create for feeling good, feeling motivated, feeling energetic, for going to sleep and whatnot. So obvious, obviously, uh, you know, if you're not getting enough protein, which most people are not. Um, and then you suddenly get enough freaking protein. Now you're going to feel better because your neurotransmitters are all dependent on, um, the amino acid precursors. Okay. And I think a big piece of this puzzle that people are missing is that there's so much stupid recommendations about protein, especially coming from government officials where they rec they say, oh, like the minimum daily allowance for protein or whatever is like um, <laughs> 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 grams per pound of body weight, which first of all, body weight can mean many things. If you're like 200 pounds overweight, like that's a fuck ton of protein. <laughs> 
uh, if you're 200 pounds overweight, okay, so lean mass is, or ideal body weight is a better metric. Um, but the government chip typically recommends like half your body weight or less. And that is just such an under, that's not scientifically supported. That is ridiculously low amount. So, you know, if you're eating, if you're under eating, under eating protein most of your life, which most people are, and you suddenly get enough protein, you're going to fucking feel better. Okay, because uh, protein needs increase when the, the stress, the overall amount of physical and mental stress increases um, in a person's life. And we see even with uh, burn victims, in order to recover faster, typically your protein needs uh, increase anywhere from double to sometimes triple. Uh, and we see when uh, when we overfeed protein and burn victims, they, they tend to recover much faster than uh, burn victims who do not get that overabundance of protein. So people who are under stress, both physically and mentally, um, tend to recover faster when they eat more protein because your protein needs go up in response to both physical and mental stress, period. So that's the hugest one. So the next thing is in the carnivore communities, anybody who's been following the Facebook and Reddit groups for a long time, and the forums way back, you know, decade, you know, a decade or more ago, you'll know that people tend to feel best when they eat mostly red meat from ruminant animals. Typically, uh, things like beef, lamb, bison. Okay, when people are eating, um, uh, like the the red meat, especially beef. Beef is the most common one. They feel way way better on on that red meat than they do. Um, from other animals that are not as nutrient dense. Now, let's keep in mind that pork is te is technically red meat, um, and and technically chicken could be red meat too. The flesh could turn red uh, if those chickens are fed a certain way. Okay, the the color of the flesh of both pork and chicken change depending on their diet, but. Um, Based on uh, lab analysis, what we can see is that beef, and we're talking just, you know, as they're mostly raised, okay, we're not talking about specially fed chickens or pork or anything, but as, from what we see, um, in general, beef, it has about three times the amount of carnitine, okay, per ounce, first of all, than pork, okay? And pork has anywhere from two to three times more carnitine than chicken. And fish ha has like um, one to two milligrams of carnitine per ounce. Okay, so so for reference here, uh, for reference, um, let's see if I can do this mathematical analysis properly. So um, let's just say per three ounces, okay, beef has about 82 milligrams of carnitine. Pork has about 25 milligrams of carnitine. Chicken has about 10 milligrams of carnitine. And fish has about uh, 5 milligrams or less of carnitine. Depending on what fish we're talking about, obviously. So there's a huge difference in carnitine content from beef. Okay, And carnitine is a supplement that people take uh, in the, uh, for nootropic benefits. And for things like healing from Parkinson's. And for uh, reversing chronic fatigue syndrome, okay? Uh, in the nootropics community, acetyl l carnitine in particular is one of the most widely used and effective uh, nootropic supplements that people use. And I found extreme benefits uh, in my daily fatigue when I take a carnitine supplement, particularly acetyl l carnitine at doses, dosages of one to three grams per day, okay? So it is no surprise to me that people who eat, uh, you know, these people in the carnivore community, they eat anywhere from one to sometimes four or five pounds of red meat a day. And they notice they feel drastically better within a couple of weeks of doing so because they're getting enough protein to, uh, as a building blocks of their dopamine, serotonin, and GABA, but they're also consuming enough carnitine, which supports um, acetylcholine, as well as prevents the neurotoxicity of glutamate and also supports uh, energy production by bringing uh, fat, uh, energy from fatty acids into the mitochondria. 
So, and there's a wide variety of other benefits that people can look into if they look up carnitine. Okay, but um, since I started experimenting with, with the acetyl L carnitine that's nootropic, I started to realize, holy shit, this is exactly how I feel when I eat like a, a high amount of red meat. So it makes sense. I think a lot of people uh, are lacking carnitine. So there's another huge one. Um, so obviously, on top of that, uh, we have the fact that, you know, most people, especially that are coming from like vegetarianism and veganism, when they switch over to a carnivore diet, they talk about how like a light switch turned off, like for once uh, in their life, they actually feel like they can think and all this other nonsense. And it's not nonsense. It's basically, not only the carnitine, the amino acids, but also things like iron, uh, or iron, I don't know how the fuck people say that, but I don't give a shit. Iron, um, you know, adequate levels of B12, um, B6, vitamin B6, which is another cofactor involved in uh, creating all of your neurotransmitters. So... Um, lots of nutrients that people are probably low on, um, you know, especially in a standard American diet. <laughs> so another thing is when you switch to a carnivore diet, um, there's pretty much no, there's pretty much a, a zero chance of consuming fortif fortified foods and synthetic vitamins and minerals, unless people are taking supplements and things. And so this is a commonly overlooked area in health is that a lot of these uh, supplemental B vitamins, especially, but other vitamins and minerals, when you consume them in uh, like fortified foods, like cereals, white rice, and crap like that, um, even things like milk, typically what can happen is we get an overabundance of inactive forms of certain vitamins, and that can interfere with the synthesis and metabolism of uh, active forms of vitamins. And there's a whole host of other imbalances that can happen between things like uh, zinc and copper and uh, iron. B vitamins can rob each other uh, if you take them in supplemental form. Um, and so I, I can't even begin to explain how many uh, people's how many people I've seen uh, with dangerous side effects of supplemental supplemental vitamins and minerals. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that these are entirely bad or good. There's therapeutic uses of some of these things, like vitamin C, believe it or not, which is dogma in the carnivore community. They'll crucify you if you say that you think vitamin C has benefit, supplemental. Um, even things like thiamine, vitamin B1, and, and uh, P5P, the active form of B6. There's some therapeutic uses of these uh, vitamins and minerals. But overall, lots of people have been over-consuming them most of their life. And now they get off all the fucking fortified foods and bullshit. Even people on whole foods diets probably are getting like fortified uh, supplements that they don't even think, they don't even realize might be harming them from things like fucking almond milk and crap like that. Or even white rice. Some people say they're eating a whole food diet and they're still consuming white rice. Like you'd be surprised how many foods you probably, you know, people eat in these whole food diets that are actually fortified. And that's technically a isolated, refined supplement that's added. So it's not really a whole food. Um, and these can be problematic. So a lot of people um, might experience remission of things like autoimmune disease um, or chronic fatigue or something simply because they, know, they resolve their chronic overdoses or imbalances of fortified nutrients. And I think for me, I suffered from that for a long fucking time just because of all the weird experiments and things I did and whatnot. Um, all the monster energy drinks with all the fortified B vitamins I was taking for so long. So yeah, that's like a commonly overlooked thing is that we're now actually eating a whole food diet. And there's really no, no room for fortified vitamins and minerals when you're eating mostly red meat and things like butter. Unless you're drinking like some of that, the milk products that they have, or if you're one of those fools who think you need a multivitamin on the side of your freaking carnivore diet, which is just defeating the purpose, if you ask me. <laughs> um, now, I will say, just as a side note here, that um, I think it's probably a good idea to also supplement or to also eat uh, actual whole organs 
mostly liver. Uh, and I don't think desiccated organ supplements give you the same nutrition that the whole organ does, despite what some of these carnivore gurus that now sell supplements will say, like freaking Paul Saladino. Um, and the reason, the main thing about liver is that you you don't get enough folate or vitamin B1 or vitamin A in most of these muscle meats, especially beef. And so, and I don't think eating pork is a good idea for the most part. And I don't think it's a bad idea either. I just don't think it's optimal. I think it's best to eat liver and, um, and, and meat, red meat, muscle meat. And I would say four ounces of liver a day is probably a good idea. But most people are scared of the vitamin A, which is irrational. Uh, anyway, and that's another video. So, uh, some other things is the fact that, so if you're eating a keto carnivore diet, not only are you getting enough protein. So a lot of people, they say that they feel better on keto. They reverse their depression, their chronic fatigue syndrome and everything on keto. Uh, but some people don't experience that. Some people experience feeling even worse on keto. Chances are the reason why a lot of people don't feel so good on keto is because keto and ketogenic diet circles it is common misinformation where they say that uh, you're eating too much protein. Protein is like chocolate cake. It turns into fucking sugar. That is total bullshit. Anytime you find a ketogenic guru that tells you uh, to limit your fucking protein because it's going to like kick you out of ketosis and kill your progress or something, uh, you should probably take everything they say from that point on with a grain of salt. That is literally just parroting information. It's not scientifically accurate. Ketogenesis has nothing to do with protein or fat. It is entirely um, limiting your carbohydrates. It's the, the scarcity of carbohydrates, the lack of availability of carbs that triggers ketone production in the liver. Uh, and to take this further, gluconeogenesis is in fact a demand-driven process. You, it's not based on supply. So if you eat, uh, you can eat as much protein as you want, uh, especially from whole meat products. Generally, your body's not going to just magically convert that protein into fucking glucose. It's just not. Um, however, uh, some of these freaking gurus say like, oh, you need glucose in order to produce tears in your eye. So if you need glucose for, for tear production or glucose for glycogen production, your body can break down um, amino acids from protein and from muscle tissue in the case of protein deficiency, by the way, uh, in order to supply demand. But its primary source of glucose is actually the, gl the glycerol backbone of triglycerides, as well as free fatty acids and adipose tissue, as well as uh, recycling pyruvate and lactate in the core recycle. So mostly your body will convert protein if you are not eating enough fucking protein it'll break down muscle tissue to supply glucose uh especially in chronic starvation where you're not eating enough calories so eat enough fucking protein to avoid muscle breakdown and to avoid glucose uh being produced from from protein that's how you avoid that but people probably feel better on fucking carnivore because they're eating enough protein they're preventing that muscle tissue breakdown and they're not starving their neurotransmitters of amino acids um, like people do in freaking keto diets. And you have the benefit of being in ketosis. When you're in ketosis, okay, again, you know, and I've tested this using blood, uh, blood ketone monitor where I had like 1.5 uh, millimoles per deciliter or something like that of ketones uh, after four weeks of eating extremely high protein. Uh -huh freaking ketogenic diet. Um, and I was eating a lot of butter at the same time. But uh, what was I saying? So when you're in ketosis, you there's a wide variety of benefits on mental health and energy and stress. Uh, one of those is that your body becomes very efficient at preserving uh, muscle muscle tissue. Okay. Also, there is a upregulation of recycling of BCAAs in the blood, as well as more muscle protein synthesis and leucine uh, in the blood for, uh, for prolonged periods of time. So when you're eating a higher carb diet, typically leucine, you have to be consuming 
uh, throughout the day sporadically. But for whatever reason, studies by Stephen Finney and Jeff Bullock have found that leucine stays in the blood um, uh, pretty steadily throughout the day in a ketogenic state. And this contributes to its muscle sparing effects over time after the adaptation phase. Um, and that's key because a lot of the studies that anti-keto people use to debunk it are typically done before the four week transition period. But people like Stephen Finney, Jeff Folock, Ryan Laurie, they are using studies on people who are adapted for longer than four weeks. And that's why you see benefits past the four week mark, but not before. Um, so yeah, if you have greater amino acid supply in the blood throughout the day, you're going to have an anti-catabolic effect, which means uh, less stress hormones being produced and cortisol is a wild card. A lot of people don't understand cortisol. Um, and then, uh, so less breakdown of things like phenylalanine, which is required for, for dopamine. Uh, so the other thing, the other thing is we have a greater conversion of glutamate into GABA in the brain. And so ketogenic diets have been used therapeutically for neurological disorders for decades. In particular, everyone knows it was first found to be used for epilepsy clinically over a hundred years ago. And the reason why it seems to be, been, it seems to put epilepsy, chronic seizures into remission seems to be because it has upregulation of GABA. It has effects on upregulating GABA in the brain. So upregulating GABA in a ketogenic state means you're going to feel even killed most of the time. You're going to feel calm. You're, you're going to feel relaxed. You're going to have greater mental clarity. Um, basically, GABA, if you've ever taken the L-theanine, Another amino acid people take for nootropic benefits. I mean, these motherfuckers could literally just eat a carnivore diet, get all the acetyl, get all the carnitine they need, uh, get all the B vitamins and things they need, and then get that upregulation of GABA so that they don't really need to be taking theanine. And yeah, you save a bunch of money on supplements, but no, they want to freaking do their their freaking uh, plant based diets and whatever. But um, yeah, so. Most people who say, oh, freaking keto and carnivore is horrible for your stress hormones, um, they probably have never done a, a, a properly designed carnivore keto diet with adequate protein for long enough with adequate sodium, by the way, because most people under eat sodium, to experience those, ga those GABA upregulation effects. And for me, I notice um, when I eat high carb, my sleep goes to shit. But when I eat keto, after a while, um, typically anywhere from th uh, three days to two weeks, depending on like how adapted I am, uh, I notice my sleep drastically improves. I'm able to fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, sleep way deeper. And that's probably because of the, the, ga the, the boost in GABA production, probably. Obviously, um, when, when a carnivore diet, you're also eating minimal carbohydrates. Carbohydrates tend to be inflammatory for some people uh, just due to their life, their past lifestyle habits are more sensitive to these carbohydrates. So that could also be providing a benefit to their depression. Um, another thing is lots of people have intolerances to uh, certain plant foods and compounds and plant foods. None of this means that carbs are, are bad. None of this means that vegetables are bad. It just means some people might have intolerances to these foods. And so if you have an intolerance to broccoli and everyone's telling you how good it is for you and whatnot, you know, I used to spend way too much money, like a $10 a day on pounds and pounds of vegetables. And I had less money to spend on protein. So I was eating like half a pound of meat a day, under eating protein and overeating these freaking plant foods. Lots of people have digestive disorders, uh, Crohn's disease, and even depression. Some people notice uh, an increase in depression when they add things like kale and spinach back to their carnivore diet. So it's very possible that some specific people have unique intolerances to some of these plant foods. So, um, and I know that there's a wide variety of other possible reasons for why people's chronic fatigue syndrome and depression goes away in carnivore. 
But I think these are the main reasons. Is like you're eating enough protein now. You are getting enough carnitine if you eat beef. You're getting all of these vitamins and minerals you're probably lacking. And actually people don't realize it, but meat typically has uh, quite a bit of your daily amount of magnesium and potassium if you eat the, the juices. And it lacks a lot of the anti-nutrients and fiber that hinders the absorption of these vitamins and minerals. So things like oxalic acid, phytic acid, uh, and even fiber can prevent the absorption of magnesium, potassium, zinc, and iron. So a lot of people, and there's been vegans who have said that they were chronically deficient in vitamin A as well as um, uh, zinc and magnesium. And no matter what supplements they took or what they did, they couldn't seem to get their blood tests to nudge. Then when they went carnivore, all of a sudden, all of these vitamin deficiencies went away. And again, this might just be unique to these people, but it seems pretty clear that these anti-nutrients and mineral chelators can play a role in some people's health. So um, again, I'm not saying that, vit that uh, vegetables or plant foods or carbs create deficiencies or are like bad for everyone but these might be reasons why specific individuals notice significant benefits of carnivore so these are huge huge like things <laughs> and like we have people like lane norton claiming oh it's a freaking placebo it's because they're probably in a caloric deficit and don't fucking realize it and just for reference here when i went carnivore the first time i went from doing cardio every day as well as my weight training and only eating 3,000 calories a day to suddenly eating 4,500 calories worth of butter, coconut oil, uh, and meat and cheese. No cardio because my hip was injured and then just lifting a little bit less. Um, and I lost, um, uh, I think it was 15 pounds in a matter of like three weeks. And I started gaining uh, strength on all of my Olympic lifts. I went from clean and jerking 225 pounds for like one rep to all of a sudden repping it out for like sets of five, which was fucking crazy in a matter of three weeks while losing 15 pounds. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot more to carnivore than a lot of people, even the carnivore gurus themselves may realize. So leave this, leave your questions and comments. Oh yeah. One more thing. What else we got in red meat? We got creatine, carnitine, carnosine, um, Okay, and, and many other, like, nutrients that you typically don't find in regular diets. And do you think, don't, have you ever looked at a fucking pre-workout supplement or these muscle-building supplements these fuckers take? They got creatine, carnosine, um, uh, what was the other one? Creatine, carnosine, carnitine. They've got all these nutrients and B12 and whatnot that are found in freaking red meat. And typically in amounts that are way too low to create clinical significance. People are taking red meat uh, nutrients in supplement form to boost their athletic performance and their cognition and shit. Why don't you just eat more fucking red meat? Oh, red meat's fucking expensive. Motherfucker, it's like three bucks a pound. You eat fucking six dollars worth of red meat a day. Think about how much fucking money people waste on fucking supplements. Just eat red fucking meat, you know? And it's so hard for people to get that through their head. They're like, I'm injured all the time. I feel like crap all the time. And they're like, under eating protein is usually the main fucking reason why. And you could be like someone's best friend and live with them for like a year. Tell them every single day to eat enough protein and they won't listen. But they're constantly suffering from the severe symptoms of under eating protein. And then they finally listen to you and they're like, oh my God, I haven't gotten injured in a, in a, ever since I started eating more protein. My insomnia went away. I'm actually feeling better. I'm not depressed anymore. It's like, fucking duh. So anyway, and this is just, you know, a little fucking rant with some of my clients just because um, I, I constantly battled with some people to get them to eat enough protein. Um, and they'll do really good for a while and then they'll like start under eating again and experience all these problems. So under eating protein is like a real fucking problem. It's terrible. 
Um, a lot of this overtraining syndrome that some people experience from lifting weights, typically like injuries and feeling overstressed, their sleep goes downhill, is because they're increasing the demand for amino acids and uh, not supplying enough of them. So I'm always telling my clients, hey, you need to eat at least one gram per pound of ideal body weight, um, preferably more than that. But to get them to eat just the minimum amount is like the hardest thing. So, yeah, leave your questions, comments down below. Eat enough meat. Talk to you guys next time.